name is Dustin Dorn. I'm Ralph Brazier. I'm Blue Tech Hong. I'm Julia Hart. And we're here to talk to you about Hokey Acres Phase 2. Um, our, our site is located at Ellicott City, Howard County, Maryland. As you can see as we zoom in into our site, the only existing road connected to the site is, for access is Pudding Lane, uh, right over there. Um, the, the zoning for our site is the Rural Residential Density Exchange Option, which we uh, took, which, which we traded a one <coughs> dwelling unit per four acre for a one dwelling unit per two acre lot um, to meet the 50% preservation parcel um, requirement. Um, our goal for the site was to maximize the number of single family detached homes. Um, each home is about 4,800 square feet. Um, and based on the aforementioned zoning, um, we are only allowed to have a uh, maximum of about 48 sites. Um, characteristics of this phase need to ma match the characteristics of phase two, meaning that we need to have uh, drainage ditches um, in lieu of um, curb and gutter. In addition, there are no sidewalks and no lighting uh, for the streets. Our utility connection points are as shown. Um, in the yellow, there is eight inch uh, sanitary sewer connection. In the blue, there is six inch water connection. Uh, here are preliminary layouts. The first layout <coughs> we have uses a uh, dual loop road design and has 44 uh, parcels. Uh, the second design, the rear end of the site is delineated by the 100 foot stream buffer uses a single loop road design, and there's 47 parcels in that design. We ended up going with layout two. Uh, here you can see that there's more condensed preserved parcel. Um, and also there is an access road um, over here on the left for emergency vehicles to access the site. Um, because of uh, a lot of the houses being along a wooded area, the value of these homes can um, therefore be increased. Um, because it is a cluster subdevelopment and because of the loop road layout, um, it creates a better <coughs> community feel um, for this neighborhood. Um, we had a couple of difficulties in grading. Um, notably was up here uh, what we called uh, the camel's back because of the two um, big hills. And there were grades leading up to this um, of about 27% uh, uh, slopes. Down here, there are grades of about 40% slopes, um, and luckily all of the um, the grading in the center of the site was 15% maximum, and for the individual sites, there's a 10% maximum slope um, after one foot offset from the homes. For the roadway design, we used a design speed for a rural residential road of 30 miles per hour, and we determined that for a maximum downgrade of 6%, uh, the topping height distance would be 250 feet. Um, we looked at the, the more extreme vertical <coughs> and horizontal alignments that you can see here uh, to determine whether they do meet the required uh, standard and we calculated that they do, they do provide um, safe, safe use for drivers uh, along the road. And for our pave, uh, pavement design section, we determined that each, uh, to assume each household would generate 10 trips per day, and multiplying that over the number of houses, uh, households in our site, we came to about 480 trips average daily traffic, and using that number, we determined that uh, P2 standard from the Howard County Design Manual uh, pavement section would be used for the pavement. Um, our pre-development peak discharge was 57.2 cubic feet per second, and uh, post-development is 87.9 cubic feet per second. Um, as you can see here, the pre-development flows went around the site, and now, uh, based on our bolt grading, it goes across the center of the site. We base our curve numbers um, off of type B and type D soil, um, residential one acre uh, um, curve numbers, or TR55, and also tight B soils of meadow. Times of concentration decrease about 20% um, from 32.4 minutes to 24 minutes. For the storm, stormwater drainage system, we designed for an open channel drainage ditch located on both sides of the right of way, similar to what the existing ones are. As you can see in a photo in uh, phase one of this project. 
<coughs> we also determined that we would require two culverts, uh, one to drain, drain under the road at our intersection, and another to drain from the drainage ditch to the retention pond, and uh, we ran the numbers through the PT pusher and find them accordingly. And from the previous slide, um, where the culvert drains to the retention pond, as you can see here, we size the retention pond to retain a storage around of 2.1 acre feet and designed and included a riser structure to prevent any overflow from the retention pond. The wet utility has provided quite a few design challenges for us. Uh, our water line you can see here starts at the connection and runs in a loop along our road. Uh, it accommodates a required fire flow of 750 gallons per minute, uh, so we decided to use an 8 inch diameter ductile iron pipe. Um, blow off valves and air release valves are placed at the appropriate points along the uh, water line, as well as butterfly valves were also used. Uh, for our sanitary sewer system, we use 100 gallons per day per person, four person, four people per home, uh, to compute a uh, minimum required diameter of eight inches. And uh, the manholes are placed at all horizontal changes in direction along the sewer line. Uh, as you can see here, there's our water main above our sewer line profile. This is from the high point of the site running down toward the footing lane connection. Uh, this is the 1.88 foot elevation the water, of the water line above the sewer line, uh, which satisfies the 1.5 foot vertical separation. Um, as you can see, the uh, pipe running into structure nine uh, runs in at an elevation of about 412 feet. On the next slide, <clears throat> we see that that limited the height that we could put the outlet pipe at structure nine. This is structure nine. And so <clears throat> the outlet pipe <clears throat> had to be placed at an elevation of 412 feet. And if we were to continue this, this is a 0.5% grade. <clears throat> and if we were to continue this down, <clears throat> the terminal structure at 34, then we would exceed the 16 foot maximum cover requirement. So what we ended up doing was removing the pipe between <coughs> the structure 13 and 14, and we moved up the, the pipe at structure 14. And we ended up running the pipe from structure 13 down our uh, emergency right of way toward, to where a pump station is located near our stormwater management pond. At the pump station, the uh, wastewater can be pumped up Structure 35, which is located at the end of the line where our uh, sewer connection is located. Great. So, moving to erosion and sediment control, uh, we utilize the 2011 Maryland standards for specifications for soil erosion and sediment control to help with a phase one and phase two plan, not to be confused with phase one, phase two, 50 acres. Uh, based on this drawing right here, you'll see a few different elements which will be employed in our phase one plan. Uh, our stabilized construction entrance, which is 24 by 50 foot. Uh, because all the slopes around our proposed super silt fence are less than 10%, we can have one that is unlimited length and length. Uh, so we have a 3,100 foot super silt fence protecting the stream around the edge of the site. Um, in addition to that, we have a stormwater uh, a sediment basin which will be converted into our stormwater retention pond on completion of the uh, project. In addition to dust control measures uh, placed around the site because of the large amount of uh, cut and fill operations that have been going on. So moving on to our phase two plan, uh, around the proposed road you'll see our temporary stormwater, uh, stormwater diversion channels, uh, which will take all of the uh, sediment and stormwater runoff into the sediment basin. And what's great about this opportunity right here is that will be converted into our um, stormwater management, our permanent stormwater management structures uh, once the site is complete. In addition to that, um, seeding and mulching um, and uh, land grading will be done to specification. In addition to installing um, snow check dams in the temporary stormwater diversion channels um, as per contractor specifications. So with that and all the different components of our projects assembled, uh, we came to a total of just under $1.1 million for the project completion. And with that, just some immediate cost-cutting measures for the project without completely redoing our layouts involved our grading plan overhaul. As we saw before, there was a uniform grading approach to the center uh, part of our, of our parcel. Uh, rather than doing that, utilizing cut and fill techniques around our affectionately named camel, camel humps um, towards the northern part of the site uh, to be able to make a more efficient cut and fill uh, grading operation. In addition to that, um, working back with our, our sanitary sewer design and rather than using a pump station, going with the grinder pump instead. Uh, with that,
with that. Are there any questions for us? Okay, so first hash home with your name. <laughs> All right. <Yes>. <laughs> <laughs> Two with the uh, with the grading of the site. Uh, it obviously looks very steep. Were the roads public roads, private roads? Oh. Public. Okay. Uh, it looked like I was a challenge. How about were the maximum grades on your roads? Five. Oh, okay. So it was worse than the actual one. Thanks. The locks were steeper than we tried to keep the road before you important than the, the lots were the difficult part. The, the layout was very efficient, but I kind of wondered about some of the, the radiuses, radii on some of the roads. They seemed kind of tight, but it was, it was good. Thanks. You didn't at least talk about the uh, motto. Oh yeah, um, our, our internal consultants have a lot of the logo right here. It's a study determined and driven. So, uh, so you got a logo, we just don't know how you came up with it. It was just random. I think it was just something that you would never expect something to be if you're like, let's go through this. All right. So, any other what questions for these guys? What was the most difficult part of the entire project that you had most of the I think that depends who you ask. Yeah, that's <laughs> I would say the pipeline work was the most difficult part. Um, you know, the grading plan was definitely a challenge for us as we went through. Uh, that was tough balancing out the head. Like we said, that hill was just a monster and a place that nobody wanted to So I would say probably getting the hill out of there and balancing how to build the best we 